Good evening, friends. Yeah, welcome to the today's uh, study circle uh, series uh, uh, being organized by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, the Bangalore branch of SIRC. And the subject for discussion today is the professional ethics. And for Chartered Accountants, again, professional ethics as a session is it really required? Maybe a question which many people can internally start asking why this institute is having a study circle session on this subject. Don't we have any other subject to put in? Uh, actually, from the brand side, when we think, yes, it's important that, you know, sometimes we need to brush up and keep on brushing up every time or at, at regular intervals. And also, this is important to look at this from a different perspective, right? Each speaker gives a different perspective to it. So, therefore, we thought, let us have a session on this, which is supposed to be an eye-opener session. I was just talking to the speaker today. Uh, how can I describe today's session as special session? Then he said, okay, this is going to be an eye-opener. So if it's eye-opener, why not? Let us all enjoy this today's session. Now, the speaker for today's session is uh, C.A. Vasuki. I request another speaker or regular speaker, Vinay Khadri, to escort Vasuki to the stage and also present a welcome for the crowd. Uh, 
it's a it's a i would cover uh, topic code of ethics 2009 there is a draft session available currently uh, for 2017 more or less very similar but there are a few changes uh, i might not be covering that that i i would like to uh, request uh, the member the institute to give me another chance to cover that once it comes live having said that I thought I should start with this. I was just thinking, what should be the starting point of this discussion? Our motto is very, very uh, apt for this situation called professional ethics. So uh, I would like to uh, I would like to state this uh, uh, shloka. I may not be as good as uh, Shiva, but I'll try. Yes, Satyeshu Jagriti. काम काम पुरुषो तदेव शुक्रम तद्ब्रह्म तदेव मृच्छते तस्ता सर्वे तदु नी कशन एक वैत फर्स्ट फ्रेज इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फर्स्ट ये सत्यु जागृत When the whole world is sleeping, as a third component, we should be awake. And then, kama or kama, maybe mana. Go after desire, desire one by one. Bring it to the right path. And then help the company to achieve success, help their professional growth, and also go through a personal success in the process. And by doing this. we we'll do only what is right and that's how you attain god and once you attain god the knowledge ends there because god is everything that's what in a in a nutshell it means some of these concepts you would have heard but i thought there are uh, important points to ponder and think about while you are progressing in the session so i would cover um, uh, initially what are the fundamental principles which are third component should follow it's a very important question in fact the whole session can be revolved around these five points five principles first one is integrity objectivity personal competence and due care confidentiality professional behavior all of those are this this is simple english but to follow all this it takes lot of time and effort and it has to evolve one has to evolve as a ca i will come to that what is the conceptual framework which we are talking about here what are the threats which is there for a chartered accountant what are the safeguards available how each threat can be tackled how each threat has a solution what are the steps the chartered accountant has to follow to ensure the completeness in his audit how he can follow the code of ethics that's what we do today So, firstly, I'll uh, mention about different threats, and then what are the safeguards available. Threats is something which we need to know. It's not threat per se, but these are all very important concepts which we need to bear in mind when we are going through the profession. So, this uh, these are classified in five parts. Self-interest threats. What is this? It may occur as a result of the financial or other interest. The what is financial or other interest? We we will discuss one over one we discuss self review threats this is something which we do a self review or there is there is a mechanism internal to any cfo we certify or we open something and then we we'll come back and question our opinion come back and question our facts question come back and question our circumstances the way we get opinion 
then advocacy threats. These are some professional judgments and some opinions given which could be a potential threat. So whether these are all right, this is this was not right, we need to figure out. Familiarity threats. It's because of a long association or an employee working for long in a company or a same audit team again and again doing the same audit. So once we become familiar, there are lots of threats because we start taking everything for granted. So there is no new thing in an audit left after doing for a while. You agree? You agree? Right. So what are these familiar threats that also we go through? Then intimidation threats. This is something which causes a concern to a chartered accountant to believe that whether he can give the right opinion. What are the what are the forces behind him which is acting on him to do against what is right? That is intimidation threats. Okay, what are the safeguards available? From our profession or the statute or the regulation, we have educational trainings. This could be one of the training. Experience requirements. So obviously, uh, if I have to become, if I have to do an audit of a very big company, uh, let's say a 20,000 crore company, you need experience, right? It cannot be done by uh, somebody who is doing an audit for 5 crores or 10 crores company. Obviously, the dynamics are different, the statutory, the regulations are different. So, we need to understand where we are coming from, what is the regulatory framework. This requires a lot of study. So, that's why this continuous professional education. Then, uh, corporate governance, it always helps because uh, company laws come out with corporate governance rules and regulations which help a child accountant or any legal professional to really comply with this. Uh, uh, either documentation or it could be compliance with the company law or it could be uh, any, uh, any any other act. So this will help. Then professional standards. Obviously we all know that we have to follow a set of accounting standards and rules prescribed by Companies Act. National Accounting Standards have come up with rules and act and at the standard. Then external review. So uh, this is, uh, th I could say this is a, a peer review or it could be a independent, uh, 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 independent uh, chartered accountant uh, expert giving, you know, giving, a, giving a feedback, it could be regulatory uh, uh, review, any of this. There are some uh, safeguards in work environment, when we speak about members in service, I will go more deep into it. Now the first principle is integrity. What is integrity is very simple. You be straightforward and honest. So it is either water or it is land. It cannot be both. So there are some examples which demonstrate what should be the straightforward and honest. It should contain, if it contains a materially false misleading statement, then you need to take appropriate steps to correct it. Contains statements or information furnished negligently. We should not be indulging in negligence. Omits or obscures any information required to be included where such omission or obscurity would be misleading. Any information which is misleading. So we we uh, state something which, which is very misleading to the users of the organization. Next is uh, section 120 talks about objectivity. It's an obligation on all professional accountants not to compromise their professional duty or while in service. Judgment bear because of bias, conflict of interest or undue influence of others. So basically we are objective in the principle, what the principle says we do and we go by the law, by the uh, code of ethics, the standards, the rules, uh, the uh, act. So we go based on the objectivity of those principles, never deviate from that, that's what it means. The relationship that biases or influences a professional judgment of the professional accountant should be avoided. So uh, why we are, uh, it might be a familiarity, it could be an intimidation. Uh, some of those threats will, will uh, um, influence a child accountant to have an undue influence. It will have an undue influence 
to give her own opinion or to not to give her an opinion. Then uh, competence and due care. Section 130 talks about it. To maintain professional knowledge and skill all the time. Trust me, this is very challenging. Today we have a new ICDS, we have GST, we have uh, uh, in the AS, we have so many rules and regulations. And as an auditor, whether you opine on a financial statements or you give an opinion, we are expected to know many of these uh, almost by heart. Or at least, we, we cannot, at, at, the, at the field, you will not to say that I will check and come back. You will have to have a ready, uh, at least a bare understanding of the rules. That means it requires a lot of education, a lot of training, all those things. To act diligently in accordance with the technical standards and professional standards. So there are lots of technical guides, there are guidance notes given, there are uh, auditing standards given. Many of these will give a uh, basis uh, for our opinion. Many of the standards uh, are explained. The, our institute uh, gives magazines which explains that a lot of our co-members have written a lot of good uh, uh, detailed explanation. Uh, we are expected to go through all those things. And that's how we attain uh, professional competence and maintain professional com competence. Then there's confidentiality, very, very important. Uh, how, what is the confidentiality, uh, confidentiality you can maintain with the, with the data what you have? Say so as you understand, you will have live data of the client. So this cannot be uh, just divulged uh, just like that without his permission. And mind you, you might know all the business secrets. You might know the niceties of his business. You might you might know certain loopholes which they are the purpose of correcting. So many things are there. You have to be careful when you are discussing with your professional colleagues. You are uh, you are talking for a while, or you are uh, you are chit chatting. Anything is a bad. But you should be very careful of this uh, principle confidentiality. It should always be in your mind. And you could be also uh, using this information without the client's knowledge. You will have an abundance of information. It could be simple, as simple as somebody from Brazil calls you and asks you uh, certain data of the client. If you are not, you should not be able to give the, this data without the information. We will study that in future. Many, many of us get these kind of calls. So it's very important to bear in mind that you cannot disclose confidential information. It's private to the organization. When it comes to authorities, what we have to do, we will study it. Then uh, professional behavior we have talked about. Do not make exaggerated claims of your services. So be very frank, be very honest. So uh, you, uh, what you can do, what is your expertise, be frank enough. And take other, other professionals' help if you are not good in one area, let's say, I am not good at GST, so I will take a GST expert help to understand and give the right opinion rather than going and exaggerating and getting a client. So getting a client is one thing and, you know, impressing upon him how he needs to do the um, compliance is another thing. So do not get into any, any such exaggerated claims. Then disparaging uh, references, uh, not the right references, then uh, uh, unsubstantiated comparisons. You do comparisons with many other CA firms and then you solicit the clients. Let's not get into that. That's what it means. Then there are some advertisement guidelines which is given uh, for loads of uh, do's and don'ts for advertisement. We'll, we'll, we'll also discuss about it in a while. Okay. So uh, quickly I want to uh, push upon important important things in a self uh, self interest self review threats what is the financial interest uh, financial interest in a client or uh, jointly holding a financial interest with a client so it, you might be having individually a financial interest let's say you invested somewhere uh, you invested in shares you invested in market in, 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 you invested in the company or you, you take an NFT in a listed company and you want to do an audit of the same company, not possible. Then undue influence on total fees from a client. So what is undue influence? Uh, let's say the client, the, the, the fees is uh, very important to you. So you do anything and everything to retain the client for the fees. That's undue influence. Let's not get into that. Then have a close business relationship. You might have purchased, you might have sold, you might have taken some transactions with the company. We should not do such transactions while we are auditors. Why all this? Because we are talking about independence, right? 
So if we are th thoroughly independent, we are, th we are thoroughly a third party giving an opinion. We are more effective and we will say the right things. It's like a family doctor doing an operation for a, for a mother or father of his or a surgeon outside doing a same operation to that mother and father. There is a difference. Not that he cannot do, but he has to get that independence before he does that. So he has to be in that mind frame. Then potential employment to the client. So we might do many things uh, which hoping that uh, in future uh, there is an employment opportunity. Then a loan or two or from an assurance client which we already discussed. Then what are the self effects? Significant error during the re-evaluation of the work. That means when, uh, see always when we are opining a statement or when you are giving a certificate, take enough professional care, due diligence, do en enough intelligence uh, uh, to ensure that the work is proper. Otherwise, uh, when you are doing the, uh, when you are taking a second op opinion after you certify, that is where the problem comes. So that's what it is. Otherwise, it's good to have a second opinion where you are not sure of something or it's a, there, there are interpretations available in the standard uh, where it is not straightforward. Good to take second opinion, good to take expert opinions. Then reporting on financial statements which involve the design or implementation. I could simply say you do all the uh, financial design system process, you uh, streamline the process, you give them um, uh, information technology processes, you, you help them implement. And the same th uh, in processes you now are as a statutory you are acting as uh, to give an opinion. It could be a, an ICO for opinion, uh, internal control and financial reporting. So there is an independence issue there. That means you are biased. Then you already uh, are involved with the client to prepare uh, original data. It's, it's okay to assist, but do not get into preparation of the data uh, because you will not be able to opine uh, on the data when you are the preparer. So there is no independence there. Then uh, there are undue influence not just with the partner, it could be even with the employees, it could be the staff, it could be articles. <coughs> Very important, important. Going forward, we'll, we'll learn a lot of things on how to how to be independent. What are the things we have to do to become independent and give an independent audit opinion? That's what our rating says. Independent is audit opinion. Independent is audit certificate. So it's always that word always should be ringing in our mind. Then also involved in a service, performing of a service, or uh, which is a subject matter on which you have to opine. Uh, we should not be. Uh, assisting uh, on something where we are also preparing something and giving an opinion on that. Then what are the advocacy debts? Promoting shares in a listed company where entity is a financial is a financial statement audit client. That means I am signing the balance sheet and uh, we are, uh, while it goes on public, we are also promoting shares. That's not, that should not happen. Acting as a representative on behalf of the insurance client in litigation and disputes with third parties. That means we get into, see arbitration is one thing. There is an exemption for that. You, you can do just arbitration as a standard component. That's a different question. But for the same point, if you do arbitration, that means you might not really appreciate what is the niceties involved in reporting such uh, litigations. Then familiarity threats. Member of the uh, engagement team is relative of a director or an officer. Member of the engagement team is relative of an employee of a client, which is uh, who, who in a position uh, can influence your opinion. Then a former partner of a firm who is a director, an officer in that company now. And then you accept, we accept uh, gifts and preferential treatment. So this, these are some things which we can avoid. It could be even a long association of a senior professional. Let's say the same child, same child opponent is doing an audit for multiple years. And there is no third party. It's okay to do that, but you need to have a review mechanism. You need to have a third party approach and why before you give the opinion. It should not be purely based on that particular person. That's what it means. The intimidation threats, this is something uh, um, pressure to reduce inappropriately to extend of work. For example, a client, a client is in a cost cutting measure. They want to reduce their audit fees. And uh, your, your responsibility is, that is the same. Your, uh, as a saturator, you cannot reduce anything. As an interviewer, maybe some scope can be reduced. So it's important to understand it's not the fees. It's always not my, my principle always says your fees is one part, your diligence and 
delivery to the client as an opinion, as a uh, attestation function is different. Both are not the same. You might get a small fees for the same opinion, for the same audit uh, report, but audit report is audit report. Then uh, there are some safeguards which I would like to mention. These are some firm-wide uh, safeguards available for a chart opponent's firm. Um, stress basically have a policy, uh, have an importance on compliance with principles. So some of these principles needs to be discussed not just with you. We need to discuss internally. We need to we need to train our staff. We need to train our professional colleagues. We need to tell them what is right, what is wrong. We need to know all these things. Then prefer uh, have a policies and procedures on, uh, on hand. Trust me, many CAs will not have this. Uh, it is a starting point for us to really prepare a sh short, good policies and procedures on this and see how much we can implement. It's a very good starting point. And trust me, you will come to know many things uh, which we might be doing, which we should not be doing. Then, uh, have, it's okay to start with a single customer, single client. Uh, but have an approach, uh, no client will, uh, it's not that if I don't do work for him, I will not work for any, anybody else. This is one lingering feeling for everybody, but please, let's come out of that. Let's face reality, today everybody needs professionals. Compliance is the word today. Right? Am I right? Yeah. So let's not fear on uh, saying that uh, that's the only client I have, I need to listen to him, whatever he says. No, you do what is right. The things will follow. That's what you are in our uh, soliciting uh, advertisement guidelines say. You do what is right, work will follow. Do not advertise. People, the work will come to you. And all, always have an internal uh, disciplinary mechanism. Uh, it could be even uh, uh, a non assurance partner uh, or uh, another partner who is not a, who is a, there could be an engagement partner, there could be a signing partner. So um, somebody who is not a signing partner can, or a team can, really go through the um, uh, audit or certificate and give an independent opinion to just to be sure that we are following on the rules and regulations, statutes, compliances and other things. Okay, then safeguards within client systems, what are the safeguards available there? So good corporate governance as we discussed there, the company law has come out with corporate governance. It's good to have a checklist on corporate governance today. Many things, trust me, there are number of board meetings to be available, what is audit committee I'm supposed to do. Many things, trust me, many companies will not know what to record in an audit committee meeting. Uh, they will discuss all sorts of things but audit uh, um, uh, audit uh, related uh, issues or accounting related issues. There are, there are specifications given in companies that what you need to discuss, what you need to document, what is to be maintained. So let's follow that. There are many things like this which the companies are also allows us uh, to comply. Then uh, uh, have a, a, a competent employees with experience. This is something which is very important. So it's it's easy to say, uh, look, I, I have only five or ten people. Uh, they are not up to the mark. That is one thing. But how about giving training and getting them up to the mark? You also come up, uh, come up, study all the things. Give them, give them uh, checklists. Give them. Uh, um, you know, classes, give them training, so equip them with enough knowledge before they go into the field and they implement the right things at the right time. That will ease many of our work. Then engagement specific uh, safeguards, uh, consulting, uh, for example, we discussed earlier uh, independent third party opinion, uh, it sometimes requires rotating an audit uh, team itself after some time to reduce the familiarity threats. Uh, it's a good thing to do. Uh, yeah, many times uh, we have a feeling this is my client. I don't want to let it go. Uh, it should not go to the other person. That's not it. It's a firm or it's a total organization which is doing. So that concept needs to be there. Then it's good to get uh, uh, client acceptance uh, and have the client involved in many of the things. For example, it should consider whether acceptance should be create, would create any threats. That means your acceptance uh, without uh, your acceptance is not really confronted well, acknowledged well by the client. That means it's a threat by itself. So you should be very watchful. You it, it should be very very watchful. So my principal always says it is not just uh, 
it is not just seeing the documents, it is how much you are aware on the situation, how much you are aware on the field, is your eyes, minds, everything open and you are really observing things. By observing things you can catch many things. Then uh, knowledge and understanding of the client will always help uh, understand the, the industry, uh, it always helps because you will know the, uh, the client dynamics, you will know from where he is reacting, what he, how he has to comply, why, where is going wrong, where is going right. So many things we will we'll come to know. So as a startup content, we have to start understanding business, we have to start appreciating business as well as uh, we cannot leave over professional judgments, we cannot leave over uh, professional accounting standards or rules or whatever it is. It has to merge somewhere and we have to evolve. And that's what is, I believe, is experience. Then engagement specific acceptance. It's important to get acceptance for the engagement perspective. Should agree to provide only those services which you are competent to perform. So we should not be going overboard and doing something where we do not have knowledge. But if we can get trained, let's say we, we, are, we are doing India as we get trained and we do enough work and then uh, do the attestation function, it will be much, much better. You might be losing in the short, but you'll be gaining in the long. Then uh, there are some safeguards available like understanding the nature of the client's business, security industry, um, uh, then uh, regulatory framework. These are very important. Many of this is covered in planning and financial planning and audit. In our essay, it, it covers many of these things. So we are reiterating all those things here. Then uh, conflicts of interest. This, uh, you should take reasonable steps to identify a conflict, conflict of interest. Uh, you are, uh, maybe you are competing directly or indirectly with the client or it could be your client where you are doing a similar service or a, a different service but it is going to uh, not be in line with your client relation to, uh, or client deliverables. So you should be careful of what we, what we are delivering, what we are accepting and it should not be conflicting stance. Then uh, it's good to take second opinions, uh, threat to professional competence, due care and circumstances where the second opinion, see one thing, in second opinion when we are taking, we should be very clear that the facts and circumstances which you took in the first opinion is the same. Many times we have understood the things differently, facts changes, so opinion also changes. You cannot say I took a second opinion. The facts have to be similar, the provisions have to be similar all the uh, uh, risk elements identified. So you need to do enough homework before you take an opinion. So it is not just depending on the expert opinion. We have to do enough homework to really get into the field, understand, see ultimately you will be the best judge of what is right, what is wrong. It's only the legality is what we have to check in. So it's important to understand where the second opinion is coming from, what are the inputs given there, very, very important. And what are the enough disclosures given whether it, uh, whether it is given by a competent person, is he a competent person? Many times, client will ask you to take a second opinion from somebody. Is he a competent person is another thing. You might have to really document all those things. <coughs> then, uh, regarding fees and other types of remuneration, the fees quoted is low that it may be difficult to perform the engagement. So, we go overboard uh, to accept a client engagement and reduce the fees where we know very well that our costs cannot be recovered and what happens, you start compromising. You start compromising on not to have a professional uh, expert. You will compromise on not to have a, um, a technical uh, opinion. Many of these things will uh, hamper your opinion or a certificate. Then you should not pay uh, or receive a referral fee or commission unless disclosing the same with the client. Any arrangements to pay referral fee. Generally don't get into it. We should not get into any referral fee in case something such happens. But be open, be straightforward, be honest and disclose this to the client. Take his opinion. Um, ensure enough that your independence is not hurt at any point of time. Then uh, regarding marketing professional services. Uh, soliciting new new work through advertising or other forms of marketing, there may be professional threat, professional uh, potential threats to compliance with the uh, uh, fundamental principles. So whatever we talked about, the integrity, objectivity, uh, this should not be hampered. Ham 
we in the in the process of getting a new work. Then should, we should be honest, we should be truthful, uh, we should not make sure that we have discussed. Follow council guidelines, there are many guidelines given as how to even uh, for example, what should be there on the website, what should be, how do you, how do you uh, ask for work, where do you go and uh, apply for uh, um, uh, apply for a tender, how do you respond to a tender, uh, how do you quote a fees, there are guidelines for others. So we can follow the guidelines and be, be as independent as possible. Then next is gifts and hospitality. So somebody is giving you a lot of favor, that's a starting point. Is, you're, you should start thinking why is it that to you? Is he, uh, is he expecting uh, a favor from you? Is he expecting uh, you not to qualify? Is, it, is, he, is there something which is bothering him that you don't want to, he, you don't, he doesn't want you to look into? Many of these should, should come automatically. So do not accept any gifts or hospitality. As far as possible, avoid it. If it is very immaterial or it's just a you know, sample gift, which is for all third parties, it's fine. But there are again guidelines for that as well. Then custody of client's assets. Uh, you should not assume custody of client money or other assets unless permitted to do so by law. Maybe you are a liquidator, maybe you are an, um, uh, you have been given special powers uh, to do certain things. So we have to stick to that point, we have to disclose the statutory regulations, why we are doing that, why I'm doing those uh, custody of clients assets. Uh, as far as possible, keep a separate bank account, have a separate account for everything. Uh, do not mix it with uh, the firm's expenses or the individual expenses who is practicing as a member. So we have talked enough about independence, but it's not enough. So the framework for um, assurance engagement, that is the assurance framework uh, issued by council, Describe the elements and objectives of assurance engagements and identifies uh, various standards on auditing, standards on review engagements, standards on assurance engagements. Many of these will help us evolve as an independent uh, opinion while we are attesting our functions. Independence requires independence of mind. This is very important. What is that? It is a state of mind that permits the expression of a conclusion without being affected by influences. That means we have a state of mind when, while we are obeying that or certifying that it is not influencing and it's going based on the facts and circumstances. And it's a pure professional judgment allowing an individual to act with integrity, exercise objectivity and professional skepticism. Skepticism is something which we should not lose sight of any time. Uh, we should be always skeptic. We should look for something, uh, some, look for instances to where you can be skeptic more. The, the more skeptic you are, you will come out with more observations and the more more challenges, and you will lay the path. You will lay the pathway for having a clean, uh, uh, clean accounts, clean books, and without any much adjustments. In financial statements, audit engagements. Some of the financial uh, statement audit clients, the members of the associate uh, assurance team, the firm, the network firms are required to be independent of the financial statement audit client. That means they should not have uh, any relationship uh, between the members of the assurance team and directors, officers or employees of the client in a position to exert direct and significant influence. So this is something which, uh, and you, uh, how do you find out this? You talk to your assurance uh, team, um, uh, you know, take declarations, there, are, there is independence document which you sign off. Uh, these are some of the important documents. Yeah, sometimes you might not do this for very small clients, but it's good practice, good ethical practice to have this on board. You don't have to have much details, at least bare minimum to say there is no significant influence in your decision. A bare minimum that has to be established. There is no, uh, it's not just yours, it's the team's. So even less an article killer goes to an audit firm, uh, who goes to a client, and you need to know whether you know, many of his relatives are there. Many times we figure out his uncle is working there and they don't come up with observations. It can happen. So as far as possible, uh, take declarations. Uh, that's why policies, procedures, deliberating this in the offices, it's very important. We all, all of us think that it is not a technical topic to discuss, as Shivran said, but many times if we do this, the big things will not go wrong. 
Then at a minimum, it will be necessary to evaluate the independence of the members of the assurance team and their relatives. If the firm had a material uh, financial interest, whether direct or indirect, it could be direct financial interest or through somebody in the assurance team, then the self-interest that will kick in. So you have to be, uh, then the threat will be there, then you have to have enough safeguards, you have to have independent review mechanisms to ensure that that is uh, netted off. Then what are financial interests? It, it ranges from those where the individual has no control over the investment vehicle or the financial interest in, let's say, a mutual fund or, uh, or an intermediary vehicle to those where the individuals have control over the financial interest. That means there is a money transaction, there is no money transaction. And which influences our investment decisions. It is important to consider the degree of control and influence. So it is not just having a transaction, it is about what control, what is influence, uh, how significant is a position, how significant is a director, officer to, who has significant influence, is he a CFO, is he a director, is he a CEO, what is the, what is the, what is the authority that or your person has or his, the corporate has, where it influences your decision. These are, uh, how do you bring it to an acceptable level? One, dispose of this direct financial interest. So be, um, be firm enough to uh, disclose this and if possible come out of this financial uh, interest. Then dispose of the indirect financial interest or dispose of sufficient amount if so that it remains interest is no longer material. Then, or if nothing can be done, then dis disassociate yourself from that member and perform the engagement. Then once you know that a member of the assurance team knows that his relative has a direct uh, financial interest, then what he can do? He, he, uh, he can ask the relative to dispose of a significant portion of financial interest. So it is not he who is having financial interest, it is his relative who is having. So, you might not be really successful in asking his relative to do it, right? It's very tough. I can, we can, we, it's difficult to even get the information from your people. I understand that. But good to persuade that, persist on that and make declarations. Many times I have seen when you take declarations in writing, there's something comes out of everybody's heart and says, this is wrong, we should, I should not do it. Somewhere, somewhere you can figure out things that it is not going right. So that's, that's where you have to keep your mind open, eyes open to see what are the indications where you have a chance to identify an influence. It's very important, you can figure out that. Then discussing this matter uh, with the charge, with, uh, with the governance, basically uh, you disclose this, uh, uh, if you have an interest but it's not material, you can disclose it with the audit committee. You can say this is the, this is the, uh, if you, I mean, this is the interest we have, but this will not give an, in the coming way of uh, you know, the independent opinion or the certificate and take declarations, give declarations and, and disclose this to the client. So the client all, all knows that though you have this, uh, many times we have found there is indirect influence and it's never spoken. But this is very, uh, you have to be very careful when you're doing that. It is not just you will go outright and speak that. So you have to know where to disclose and how to make this happen. Then removing the, this is last which in where you, you, you have come to a stage where nothing can be done, then obviously you have to, you have to disassociate that person from the assurance and have an independent person. Or you can also have, um, not give him enough significant work there which will influence his opinion. That can also be done. So these are some things which we can think of in mind. Then close business relationship with assurance client. A close business relationship between a firm and a member of the assurance team and the assurance client uh, or its management uh, or it could be even network firm. So that means I have a network firm somewhere in Maharashtra, somewhere in Tamil Nadu, somewhere in Kerala. It is not just our firm. It is not just no more our firm. All of us are no, 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 it is just our firm. It goes beyond your firm. Go over your networking. And if that person is a part of your engagement, you are supposed to do the same uh, uh, compliances as we are discussing now. So, uh, for to give an example, there, are, there could be purchases of goods or services from an assurance client. Um, it could create a threat. Maybe the person owes money. Um, it will not give a right uh, picture or right forum for an auditor to do an independent one. Many times we have to be very straightforward, you know, to ask for uh, significant uh, compliances. Many times uh, not many people will like it, but 
it cannot go by somebody's liking. It has to be done the way it has to be done. Then personal relationships. Relationship between a member of the assurance team and the director. Very dangerous. An officer or a certain employee is depending on their role. Uh, it creates self-interest threat, familiarity threat, intimidation threat. So if you are related to the director, obviously you cannot go and you might not want to really rub him on the wrong side and say he's well, doing something wrong or the company is going the wrong way. Or we have enough guts to do that, though we have an influence. That means you are already disclosed. If you add that, then you are already disclosed and you are debated enough on this. Therefore, the partners and employees of the firm are responsible for identifying such relationships and consulting. See, so many things you have to do even before getting into engagement. Many of the things are not even thought of when we start to work, right? I think this is a good starting point to have a checklist. It's better to have a checklist and the way we come is have a checklist and see through this. Then, uh, employment with assurance clients. That's another threat. If I'm a member of a assurance team, independence may be threatened if a director or an officer or an employee of the assurance team is in a position to exert uh, influence over the subject matter of the opinion. Then uh, it's better to assign proper work to the assign, uh, assurance team uh, than do independent evaluation, uh, do a quality review of all these uh, opinions, and to ensure and uh, to leave away this threat. Have a third party approach in your firm, in your organization itself. It could be even uh, if, let's say, this is a very small firm. There are there are examples given in this council guide, uh, uh, in this um, uh, uh, code of ethics 2009. They've also said that you can go and take an independent charter component and ask him to do work, uh, review for your work. Let's say you're a sole proprietor, you might not be having multiple partners, but still you can make this happen. There are, there are uh, rules uh, given for that. This is an option available. Then you might have done a recent service with the assurance client, so you are very familiar. If during the period covered by the assurance client, a member of the uh, assurance team has served as an officer or a director, then he has done a service already with the client. So there is a familiarity threat, there is a, a self-interest threat, self-review threat. All these things will come. So you will be careful in that. So then what we can do involving an additional professional accountant. So along with him, there is another CA or there is another um, uh, professional guy who will, who will foresee the work and who will ensure that it is going as per the uh, professional uh, competence standards. Then discussing the issue with the charges. So if any issues are there, these are independently discussed with the audit committee or the board members and take their, uh, uh, you know, take their right inputs. Many times, after interacting, uh, inputs are not taken, they are not documented. You may not give the right opinion because it's all not based on certain facts. Many times we come to know that facts are different, facts are not correct. So your opinion won't be correct. Serving as an officer or director on the board of assurance line. You know, you, uh, no person uh, who is an officer or an employee of an entity shall be qualified for appointment as an auditor, obviously. Right? So, then long association of senior personnel with uh, assurance claim. The significance of this threat will depend on such factors. Length of time the individual has been a member of the assurance team, role the individual is playing, and the structure of the firm. So many times the uh, structure could be small. So you, you might have just that one or so two CS who do the work. So that is where you have to have a third party approach. If rotation is not possible, you have to do a third party approach. The financial statement audit clients that are listed entities. Using the same engagement partner or same individual responsible for the audit, uh, engagement quality control review. So this is something you should have an uh, engagement partner, you should be having a control review partner. So for, for big clients, you should have multiple partners, multiple uh, charter components, multiple teams looking at the same work because uh, it will come out uh, as independent as possible. So the individual partner, the individual is responsible for uh, engagement quality control review. So they don't do and perform audit of the field. What they do is they go through the work papers, they th go through the financial statements, they go through the certificate, they go through the internal reports, and they give these are the areas which we can, which which can be discussed more. These are the threats. These these are some places where you have to qualify. These are some places where you have to get representation for the management. 
Some of these parts are very important while we are progressing in the order itself. Then there are provisions of non-assurance services to assurance clients. So that means you are not only uh, giving assurance services, you are also giving non-assurance services to the clients. The following activities would generally create self-interest uh, or self-review things that are significant. And only avoidance of such activity. You should not do that. It should be conflicting. For example, you define the ICO for you, uh, you, uh, you define the um, uh, internal control systems and you start opining on that. That, that cannot happen. Or you be an internal auditor as a session auditor. That cannot happen. So you should have independent teams working on that. It's not, the, see it's a small, small firm may be doing different functions unless it is conflicting. But you have independent teams performing that. Uh, what are the threats? The authorizing, executing and consummating the transaction. So we are also involved, we are so closely working with the client. The client is almost depending on you. Sir, then I'm here with you, sir. Accounts department, tumba, uh, you know, oh, account in Peter, yaru illa. So, padiyo yella, I help nobody. Have you heard this? Many times, many clients say this. Right? So, many times we end up doing many of those services. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that it's a threat by itself. Have as independent as possible. Then, determining the, which recommendation of the firm should be implemented. So, as an auditor, you give many recommendations and then you go back, sit in the client's chair and then say, you recommend this, you do this. So, you are conflicting yourself. It's not independent. Then, reporting in management role to those charged with governance. That means now you are, you are also participating in board meetings and telling the board what they should do, what they should be doing. The, there is no CFO, there is no um, uh, manager. You are talking to the board directly and opening on the financial statements. It's okay to discuss issues and give a recommendation, but don't get into decision making with the client. That's what it means. Of course, custody of merchants, uh, clients are sent, then preparing source documents. Uh, once you are preparing, uh, do not get into preparation of data. As far as possible, let the client prepare, have their independence. Uh, you can always, it is not that uh, the client cannot do, you can guide the client, you can give him uh, formats, you can tell them how to do it, teach them how to do it, you can train them, you can give them okay, uh, uh, how the financial statements have been done. Ask him to do the financial statement, ask him to prepare the certificate. You do a reviewer's job, you do a auditor's job. Then, of course, safeguards is one across the firm or across the uh, company, uh, uh, you have a policy procedure. You discuss these issues with the client, you know, with your people openly. How many of us do that? We don't discuss these issues with our co-partners or we don't discuss it with our, uh, our own team. We will not, we will, we will not, not even ask many of these questions. That's why I said, uh, uh, I was telling Vinay that this is an eye opener. Many things we are not doing, though we are supposed to do. Then obtaining the assurance clients and acknowledgement of the responsibility of the results. This is something, you might help them to do something, you might help them to um, make an MI, you might uh, give them knowledge to prepare an MIS, but don't get in, sit, sit in judgment on the MIS is right or wrong. Let, let the client work, they have to do. So you don't sit in their chair and start giving decisions. Then person providing non-assurance services do not participate in assurance engagement. So there is conflict, right? So somebody who is uh, who's doing, uh, let's say he has, uh, there is a separate team, there is a separate uh, um, you know, internal function which you have carried out uh, a while ago and now you have opened. You cannot put the same team and say you open on that. Obviously it will be biased. Then another example, a typical example is preparing the accounting records and financial statements. So I have already discussed on this. So, as soon as possible, uh, do not get into preparation of accounts. Not as soon as possible. You should not be preparing accounting records as well. It should be it should be the client's work. Don't get into issues. Let him do the work and you do your work. Many times we say our client will be unhappy. Uh, if I say this, he will be unhappy. No. You will have to draw a line and say, he will help him out, but he has to take the initiative. He has to take the ownership. Then valuation services. This is something uh, which is important. A valuation comprises of making assumptions with regard to future developments. So you are forecasting profits, 
you are using uh, intrinsic value, you are intrinsic, you are, you are uh, calculating uh, a business uh, value, you are, you are uh, somebody you are doing a valuation work for validating shares, uh, all these things, right? So, uh, there are lots of assumptions, you will you will see a lot of uh, future numbers, you will you'll make a lot of assumptions. All then, there is a, if you start opining on those particular things yourself, that means obviously that threat is there. You are assuming something at one place. So it's like typically giving an uh, valuation service to a client where you are doing a balance sheet. So uh, that's why it says significant degree of subjectivity. So valuation is always subjective. And you obviously you cannot open on something which is very subjective. Then provision of taxation services to financial statement audit clients. Many times the firms have been asked to provide taxation services to a financial statement audit client. Taxation service can comprise of even compliant, uh, compliance planning, provision of formal taxation opinions, uh, give, uh, may assist them with tax disputes. Such assignments are generally not seen to have independent asset provided you are not directly involved in that. And for example, you can give a tax opinion, but that should not be a litigation matter which is reporting in cutting and liability. It has to be a third party. So uh, the next one is very simple provision of internal audit services to financial statement audit and if possible. Then provision of IT system services to financial statement audit clients. Uh, provision for survey of service by a firm of a network firm to a financial audit client that involves design and implementation of financial technology systems that are used to generate uh, information. So, uh, do, uh, as far as possible, uh, keep yourself away from preparing. If you are doing, uh, getting involved in IT systems and preparing them for uh, structural uh, uh, work, then do not apply. Then, this is something which is uh, we need to see. The lending of staff by a firm or a network firm to a financial statement audit client may create a self review threat when the individual is in a position to influence the preparation of a client's accounts or financial statements. So you, you have a third party, so you also go to a third party and that person has a significant influence on the client. So you cannot delegate such work there. Then litigation support services to uh, financial statement audit clients. So, as far as possible, you should not be doing litigation services where you are opining on the financial statements. Because you have to take a call and the contingent priority standard, you have to take a call whether it is uh, probable, not probable, you have to provide or not provide short disclosure. Many things in the set of the standard which are independently evaluated. You will not be able to do, have, do all those things and have those old papers when you are part of the litigation process. Similarly, legal services to uh, financial statement audit clients. The firm should not perform resolution services of a dispute or litigation where the amount involved or material in relation to a financial statements of the audit client. It would, it would create advocacy and self review threats. The recruitment of recruiting uh, senior management. Recruitment of senior management for an assurance client, such as uh, uh, those in a position to affect the subject matter of information on the assurance client engagement. Uh, it can create current or future familiarity and intimacy. So, before we outsource, before we uh, depute a client, a, a, a team, it should be a well thought one. Then, we should not be doing corporate finance and similar activities and open on those financial statements. Like promoting, dealing in underwriting, um, uh, this will create uh, advocacy threats. Fees and pricing. Uh, when the total fees generated by the assurance client represents a large population of the firm's total fees, the dependence on the client or a cl uh, client group or a concern about possibility of losing the client becomes a self review threat by itself. So it's okay to have a single customer but have an attitude of getting one more client, uh, not depending on and be as independent as possible. Do not, uh, do not. Uh, think twice before you understand what is right. Then fees overdue. This is a common problem across the CFR community, right? A self-review threat may be created if fees is due from an assurance claim for professional services remains unpaid for a long time. 
at least before you start the next next service, next year service, uh, it's important to recover the fees and then start the service. Otherwise, you are you are piling up the indebtedness and then you are stuck with the client. It affects your independence. It affects your independence <coughs> because now all my money is with the client. So whenever I see the client, I am only thinking ways to recover the money, not really thinking any independent opinion. Then pricing. Uh, many times fees uh, will take uh, for a very low level, where we know it is not appropriate. Either the fees will, you cannot recruit the, uh, the particular uh, bandwidth of people you require to deliver an independent service to them, or it could be even uh, you will not able to follow the guidance, the rules, regulations, standards. So it's important to keep as much distance as possible and make sure your pricing is adequate. You can do this. In fact, in the guidance, uh, in this council, uh, uh, there are guidance given where you can go and uh, you know convince the client. You can, you can, you can, we can give them enough data to say the why the fees is so much, so that. We get the right fees and we perform the right functions. Now, uh, professional accountants and service, many of these threats, the safeguards will be the similar to in practice. But I would go into certain important things which will, which will be more applicable to a, a person who is a child who is in service, who is not practicing in public uh, uh, accounting, but he is, he is uh, an employee. Then, uh, some of the safeguards are employees' organizations, uh, or, uh, co corporate structure, what are the corporate policies, what kind of internal controls they have, uh, what are the internal disciplinary mechanisms they have, what, whether they have a job rotation, whether they have... See, many of the things when we, when we take up an employment, we don't look into all these things, right? Obviously, nobody will not give you all the data. But it's important to be aware of all these facts and over a period of time evolve and See, we'll check whether you are independent even there. So it is my independence does not, you know, uh, you know it only relates to a CEO who is practicing. That's what we are thinking. But it also relates to who is in service as well. Then timely communication uh, of the employment organization policies and procedures. Whether the company is respecting their policies and procedures, or it is all done done the accountant he has to perform everything without any policies and procedures. Whether they are uh, they are right things, wrong things. Then there could be some professional uh, potential conflicts. Some some things could be contrary to law. Uh, so uh, many times, uh, while in service, we might oversee and we might not. We might want the company not to get into litigations. So we might oversee many of the litigation, uh, uh, the uh, statutory rules and regulations, rather than talking to the senior management and impressing upon them to comply with those rules and regulations. So that is where a child component can play a significant role in a service. So it's more important for a, uh, somebody in service to understand all the uh, niceties of the act, rules, statutes to be compliant with. It's his first uh, first duty. The intentionally mislead, obviously. So when you are when you are part of the management where they want to mislead data either to auditors or to uh, you know income tax authorities or sales tax authorities or whoever it is. Then have enough diligence, um, do enough professional uh, uh, professionalism while you're preparing financial statements as a uh, person in service. Obviously, you need to have uh, sufficient uh, expertise, uh, and this involves uh, give enough time. Today's uh, all of us know it's a busy world. Even we are general exclusives, we don't have time to get updated. But uh, you must understand one thing, that if you don't get updated, we are, we are going backwards. And we are not only putting trouble to ourselves, more importantly, people around us. So it becomes our duty, that way, that way I go back to the motto and say, when the whole world is sleeping, are you awake? Sometimes even, technically, if you go by word also, you might have to work harder than the rest of the population. Am I right, sir? We are, we are working harder than most of the other professionals to ensure that things are happening right. 
then obviously then financial interest, self in self in threats are there. So as far as possible, don't get into financial interest. Then uh, uh, do not uh, entertain inducements. It could be various forms like gifts, hospitality, preferential treatment. Let's say the CFO is given car. You do this, I get your car. This is an inducement. I'm just giving an example. It could be various things. It's very difficult. It's easy to say, but very difficult to follow. That's why I said karma. It's not easy. It's very difficult to follow. Now, uh, this was some of the important concepts which I thought I should be uh, discussing here in this forum because uh, going forward, it's the clauses, uh, uh, part one, part two, part three. Most of us are, are aware of all these uh, regulations. But I thought it's more important to understand these concepts behind those um, you know, significant clauses which they, uh, our council wants us to follow. So I'll come to the act now, some of the important things which I want to discuss here. Then uh, once the person concerned becomes a member of the institute, he is bound by the provisions of this Charter Governance Act and its regulations. So we need to read the Charter Governance Act and regulations. Honestly speaking, uh, it took a while for me to read this act and regulations. Then, uh, a member of the institute can have no other capacity in which he can take up such practice, preferable from his capacity to practice as a member of the institute. That means, you will not order, I will be sure be practicing as a lawyer and a general opponent, and do a cost management services and a general opponent. So it has to be, you have to give, uh, the reason behind this is, this itself is a full-time effort. So you have to give it enough, uh, enough focus so that we come out with uh, as qualitative as possible. And when we do the right things, trust me, many of these things, initially it is, uh, it is very uh, suffocating, it is not so friendly to us, but it will come good for the client as well as the firm. It's the long run. Section 7, uh, I thought it's important to say uh, we are not going to use any designation other than uh, that of a CA. Nor he can use any other description where, whether in addition there to, so it is, you can say chart accountant and accounting manager, chart accountant and cost accountant and advocate. It can happen both, either you are a CA or the other one. You could be even uh, members in uh, accounting, uh, other accounting bodies. Uh, but there are some exceptions given that there are some leaves given, not exceptions, there are some leaves given where you can practice other things, but you have to follow certain guidelines. Now, we all know that there are specific clauses uh, where professional misconduct is being uh, going forward, I will discuss about those things. But there is something called as other misconduct. I thought this is important, section 22. It says professional uh, or other misconduct shall be deemed to include any act or omission provided in any of the schedules, but nothing in this section shall be construed to limit or object in any way the power conferred on the duty cast on the director of discipline, that is the uh, board, uh, uh, to inquire to conduct of uh, any member of the institute under any other circumstances. That means it is all compelling. It is, even if it is not defined anywhere in the clauses, it could come under this clause. You have to be very careful when you are um, complying with the council guidelines. It is not just those clauses. It could be any other misconduct. So some of these, uh, to understand better, some of the decided cases are there where the member has been found uh, guilty of misconduct in any of the other, any other circumstances. Uh, so first one is where a CA admitted before the examination committee that he had issued a certificate to a person that he worked with him knowing it to be false. So it does not come directly under any other clauses, but this is something wrong. He is, he is guilty of mis other misconduct. Whereas he retained books of accounts and documents and failed to hand over them to the client, regardless of whether repeat, uh, of their repeated requests. So having custody of client's books, he was found guilty. Then uh, CA had uh, exercised undue influence, influence or coercion in securing for the company a payment of his fees and the letter uh, of, of appointment for the next year. That means 
we used all uh, negative ways to get the permit the next year. He was held guilty. So you have to be careful how you are asking for fees. Where a CA had uh, misrepresented to a firm while speaking employment as an accountant that he had worked for three years as a senior assistant to the firm, he is found guilty of other misconduct. Basically misrepresented. Uh, CA had not completed his audit work of the accounts of the company in spite of several reminders and payment of advance fees of audit. So he took the fees but he never performed the audit. Then, uh, company is not to engage in accountancy, section 25. No company, whether incorporated in India or elsewhere, shall practice as standard comments. If any company contravenes, obviously there, there, there is a penal provision involved there. So, no company can practice as a charter comment. Then, unqualified persons not to sign documents. Unqualified person, to, uh, basically, who is not a member, who is not a charter comment, cannot sign documents where the CA has to sign. Uh, maintenance of branch offices. So, uh, section 27 says, uh, where the child, uh, firm has more than one office in India, uh, each of one such of office should be a separate charge of a member of the institute. So, it cannot be just a manager. It has to be a full-time charge of name practicing. Let's come to uh, the first schedule and second schedule where uh, we discuss uh, what are the mis uh, professional misconduct which uh, which we look, which we look at at various instances. So part one deals with uh, professional misconduct. Uh, of a member in practice which would have the effect of generally uh, comprom compromising of his position as independence, pers independent person. So it basically revolves around uh, independent, how independent a person, a uh, opponent can be. The, basically that, so it gives instances of what we should not do. And then part two deals with uh, misconduct of members of the in service. Not many, uh, a few are there which will, which will go ahead. Then part 3 deals with members in misconduct and members in general. So one for uh, practice, one for member uh, in service, one in general. And lastly, uh, other misconduct of members of the institute in general. The second schedule also talks about uh, professional misconduct in relation to member in practice similarly. So there are three parts there. We will go one by one. Uh, Professional misconduct in relation to CA in practice. So CA in practice shall be deemed to be guilty of misconduct if clause one allows any person to practice in his name as a CA unless such person is also a CA in practice and is in partnership with or employed by him. So it, it can be a partner of the CA or it should be a employment employed person. So it should not be uh, anybody else but you give, lend, we lend our name for that. That should not happen. So it, it ensures the work of the accountant will be carried out by a CA who may be two, uh, who may be his partner or his employee and who would work under his control and supervision. So it's important to uh, have CAs who will be doing the attestation function. Then uh, pays or allows or agrees to pay or allow directly or indirectly any share, commission or brokerage in the fees or profits of his professional business to any person other than a member of the institute or a partner or a retired partner. So there is some exceptions where you can share fees, uh, commission or brokerage. Apart from those exceptions, we should not be sharing fees or agreeing to pay uh, you know, profits or brokerage to any other person. So who are these people who are, uh, it can be a retired partner, it could be a representative of a deceased uh, person or member of a, uh, uh, another professional body uh, with such other uh, qualifications. But they are all prescribed by the, uh, uh, our accounting guidance. 
So a practice member of the institute can share fees out of his professional business with such members, provided they, they are into following the memory. Uh, there are now multiple, multiple uh, disciplinary uh, functions available now. So, um, but you have to be careful. You, are, you cannot practice as both. That's what it means. You have to be as independent as possible. Then accepts or agrees to accept any part of the uh, profits of the professional work of a person who is not a member of the institute. Provided that nothing contained, nothing uh, herein contained shall be construed as prohibiting a member from entering into profits and service, including revenue, uh, receiving the, any share, commission, brokerage in the fees with a member of such professional body as may be identified in, in the earlier schedule. Uh, so obviously, when well, like you cannot, uh, you cannot pay, you will not be able to receive also. They enter into partnership in or outside India with any person other than a child government in practice or such other uh, person who is a member of any other professional uh, body having such qualifications as may be prescribed, including a resident who, but for his residence abroad, would be entitled to be registered under this clause. The council has uh, recognized a certain membership which is possible, okay, uh, who are national uh, people living abroad, uh, it could be one of these institutes, Institute of Charter Opponents of India, Institute of Charter Opponents of Ireland, Institute of Charter Opponents of England and Wales, uh, Institute of Charter Opponents of Scotland and Salem, Sri Lanka. Then, secures either through the services of a person who is not an employee of such a, of such a CA or who is not his partner or by means which are not open to a CA. So basically they are talking about uh, getting work. Then this should not be done by other than your employee or other than your partner or any other professional business. Provided that nothing herein shall contain shall be construed as public pro prohibiting uh, any arrangement permitted in uh, this item 2, 3 and 4 of this part. That is earlier slides that we talked about. Uh, he must not, that means, it says, he must not seek work through a person who is not his employee or partner or by means which are not open to CA. The work will follow. So as I said, told earlier, we have to be uh, very, uh, very diligent in working so that that's what our institute says. You should not uh, unduly advertise or solicit work. You always uh, uh, attract more and more work by your uh, performance. So a man must stand erect and not kept erect by others. This is some uh, uh, very apt statement which is given the, uh, in the book. Uh, I thought this is important to describe here. Then uh, uh, the, an example for this is a CA who wrote uh, letters to officers of different uh, army canteens uh, giving details about him and his experience, his partner and office and uh, norms for charging audit fees. He was found guilty. So he's still issuing too many information and who is not a CA. That's why it's didn't work. Now, uh, this is something, this clause, uh, I would spend some time in uh, understanding and going through this. Solicits clients or professional work either directly or indirectly by circular uh, advertisement, personal communication or interview by any other means. That means you cannot solicit a client or a professional work directly or indirectly by advertising or personal communication or interview or by any other means. Again, there are exceptions. Provided that nothing contained here in content shall be construed as preventing of prohibiting or preventing a CA from applying or requesting for or inviting or securing a professional work for another CA in practice. A member from responding to tenders, so you respond to the tender. You don't seek to participate.
participating in the tender. It is a tender which is available for a CA platform. There is a common platform, there is, it is for all CAs, it is for the entire CA fraternity and then you give the, you, 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 saw, you get the details of that and you uh, make the tendering process. You, it only says that you can respond to those tenders. You should not be seeking work there. Then, uh, yeah, there are some forms of soliciting work which the council has prohibited, uh, which are discussed below. Okay, uh, first is uh, advertising and notes in press. Members should not advertise for soliciting work or advertise in the manner which could be interpreting as soliciting or offering to undertake professional work. So they should not advertise for soliciting work. They are also not permitted to use um, you know, circulating letters, it should not be circulating letters, personal canvassing and then canvassing for client for a previous employer, go back, go back to an earlier uh, previous employer, solicit work from him. Go and tell him uh, my work firm does uh, my my firm does this work. I, I can do this for you. I can do this. I can render these services. I have this expertise. Should not be doing that. Then, uh, but there are exceptions to this. One is you can do that. Uh, you, you remember may request another CA in practice for professional work. So you can go and uh, get work from another professional uh, child component. You can do that. Then a uh, member can may advertise changes in partnership. So uh, if there are changes in the flow, uh, dissolution or it could be changes in the partnership, you, you are free to go and disclose it, but it should not be soliciting or uh, telling about your firm, how successful it is, how many partners you have. You should not be telling anything which will be soliciting work or attracting, uh, um, attracting uh, the public eye. That's what it means. Then second one is, Application for employment, uh, empanelment for allotment of audit uh, and other professional work. So, um, you are free to go right to the concerned uh, uh, organizations with a request to place his name on the panel. But it will not be proper for the CA to make roving inquiries by applying to such organizations for having his name included. You cannot seek a claim to include your name in the list. That's what it means. It is permissible to quote fees on inquiries being received or respond to the tenders from the organizations requiring professional services which maintain such a panel. That means there is a panel which uh, asking for a panel of card opponents and you are getting selected there. So there it's okay to quote the fees. Then uh, next one is publication of name or firm name of uh, say by CAs in, in the telephone or other directories published by the telephone authorities and private bodies. So uh, there are some exceptions. The first thing you should not do, but there are some exceptions. It can be done where uh, the, the entry should appear in the section of charter components. It can appear in the section of charter components. So there is a separate set, section for charter components category, there it can appear. Then, it should belong, your, uh, that should come in the same town where you are practicing. Then it should be the normal type of letter. So obviously it's not bold, italics, where something which will catch the eyes and say, yeah, this firm is something unique. It, is, it should not be like that. Then uh, it should not appear in a manner which gives an impression of publicity or advertisement. It should not be unreasonable. So it should not be unreasonable when you are giving something in a telephone directory or or uh, another body. Then um, it should not, uh, not be restricted and should be open to all chart components. So it should not be a, only a very particular section. It should be a complete forum of chart components where freely you are able to participate. So these are some exceptions. Okay, then uh, you can respond to uh, tenders, advertisement, advertisements and uh, circulars. It is not prohibited for members to respond to. So obviously uh, we should respond to tenders and you know uh, get the work once uh, the tender process is completed. Then uh, publication of book or articles. So member is not permitted to indicate in a book or an article published by him the association or uh, the firm in which he is a member or a partner. So you should not be talking about your firm, your firm services in a book. So 
So many times uh, uh, books, uh, you have to be careful when you are doing it. It's pure professional work by an individual. That's all. Then issue of greeting cards or invitations, but it can be done uh, in case of uh, you know certain uh, inauguration functions, marriages. But it should not be in the. I mean, it should be only private circulation. It should not be uh, public where you are seeking additional work. Then uh, seeking work from professional colleagues. The issue of advertisement of a circular by a charter opponent seeking work from professional colleagues on the basis whatsoever except as for it would be in violation of this clause. Then giving public interviews. So giving public interviews is fine, but you should not be again talking about your uh, 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 your expertise, your firm's expertise uh, in a way that yeah this firm. You should be only focus on the topic and talk on the topic, but not deviate from that and uh, tell any other information which will solicit work or publicize. That's what it means. Then uh, lastly, website. There are lots of guidelines given for website. Um, I quickly go through certain important things. You, you can. There are lots of things which you can you can do in a website, but. Uh, uh, you know, you are free to create your own website. You, it should, you, you, you can, it should be a pull model. It should not be a push model. That means you should get the company, the the person who is going into the website should be able to retrieve information, not seek information. And you should not be able to uh, respond to his, his information there. So it, obviously, you are you talk about your firm, you talk about your uh, uh, services, you talk about your profile as a partners. All this is fine. But you should not be say, talking about the fees of the client, you should not be talking about the number of clients you handle, uh, you should not be talking about the description, the certain details where it is not necessary to be given. So there are guidelines to this, there is a big list. Then I'll go to the next one. Uh, advertisers uh, his professional uh, attainments or services or uses any Denise designation or expresses, uh, expressions other than a CA on professional documents, listing cards, letterheads, signboards, unless uh, it be a degree uh, of a university established by law or government wants you to use certain, phrase, use certain uh, phrases or certain uh, membership, uh, then it's fine. Then uh, provide a member purchase may advertise through, uh, but you can do it through a write up. Setting out the services provided by him or his firm, particulars of the firm subject to such guidelines. There are guidelines given again, you should not be soliciting, you should not be doing in a, other than the CA forum. You, you should not be, in fact, you, it all goes and says you should not be seeking, uh, somebody should not say I am available uh, for uh, you know uh, work in a newspaper. Or I am a such and such a senior side opponent, I am such and such a uh, qualified, uh, qualified person, I have so much of experience, so I can do this. So, then accept the position as auditor previously held by another CA or a certified auditor who has been issued the certificate under the 1932 Act uh, without first communicating uh, with him in writing. So that means uh, we should uh, seek uh, 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 permission or uh, you should seek, uh, um, uh, you should communicate to this uh, previous auditor and get the communication in writing. There are various guidelines given to how to get this uh, done. If, if this, the, the acceptance of position, there should be no objection letter given. There are guidelines to this. So the underlying the objective is that member may have opportunity to know the reasons for which uh, the change is in order to apply for the safeguard in his own interest. So, uh, it is not intended in any way to prevent or obstruct the change. When making the inquiry from the detailing auditor, the one, the one proposed to be appointed or uh, already appointed should primarily find out whether there are professional reasons why he should not accept the appointment. So, there are uh, three important things which we need to take care of while we are doing this. Uh, one is uh, non-compliance of the provisions of section 139 and 140 of the Companies Act. Now, what is section 139? Yeah. 
It one thirty nine talks about upper and upper monitors. Okay. Now, uh, whether see, you, you are, we are supposed to understand whether the company has, the company has followed the uh, and complied with the provisions of section one thirty nine. So obviously, you need to have a checklist and understand. You have to make inquiries with the management, with the new with the company where you are getting work, and understand whether they have followed all this. That means there should be an AGM involved. There is an appointment of the auditor in the AGM. There is a rotation of auditors every five years uh, and extension for further five years. In fact, it goes to the extent, extent of saying even uh, current companies have gives provisions for saying that the, mem the members of the company, that means the shareholders of the company, can decide what is the period that assurance partner and the engagement team can perform the audit in during that five year period. So that means the members can, uh, are able to decide that you, the same partner and the same audit team should not do more than three years. There is a particular clause in that section uh, uh, 139 which talks about this. This is an I.O. So, it is not just important to get a name no objection, it is important to understand uh, today the compliance perspective in the, in the Companies Act. Then uh, section 140 talks about removal of an auditor where they are given a speech, is given a, if he is removed as an auditor uh, before his term, before the completion of his five year term. That means uh, there has to be a certain procedure followed by in the company's act by the company to do that. One, they have to give a special notice, uh, they have to prepare a special notice, they have to send this special notice to the auditor, uh, the person who is the auditor is going to be removed. They should take an undertaking from the auditor. Uh, he has to explain the reasons for, for, the, for the removal and he has to give his uh, objections. And these have to be communicated uh, to the board uh, and these have to be communicated to every member. This, this communication of the auditor has to be circulated to every member. There is a 15 days time period for doing all this. So, uh, and then they have, the company has to comply. They have to hold in. Uh, special notice and pass the special notice and this has to be accepted. So it is not just uh, 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 you know going by uh, just the compliance, it is lot more things into this. So it just one section 130 and 140 compliance will give you many insights as to why the audit is getting changed. Then it could be not uh, again this dispute regarding uh, audit fees. So it's important as a fellow auditor accountant, we ensure that we don't take up any work unless the previous audit is paid money. So that is a tool given by the institute to say that uh, do not accept an, uh, acceptance before that happens. And then uh, there could be other reason, a qualified audit report. No, nobody likes a qualified audit report. Especially when it is, uh, you are negating, you are giving a disclaimer. Many of these things, we will have to make inquiries and have documents in place before you do this, before you accept. Then uh, accepts uh, an appointment as auditor of the company without first ascertaining from it whether the provisions of section 140 of the Companies Act in respect of which the appointment has been duly complied with. Then charges or offers to charge, accepts or offers to accept in, re in respect of any professional employment, fees which are based on percentage of profits or which, which are uh, contingent upon findings or uh, uh, results of such empl uh, employment, except as permitted under the guidelines. Generally, auditors cannot charge fees based on, on the basis of turnover. But in some cases, this is possible, there is a measurement possible, uh, which I try to uh, put it in place here. Uh, in case of liquidator, you can do it on a percentage of uh, realization of disbursement of assets. In case of cooperative society, uh, based on percentage of paid capital and or the working capital, the gross uh, uh, gross turnover or net income or profits. Then valuer for uh, purpose of direct taxes uh, and duties, based on percentage of the value of property value, there could be fees charged. Then uh, fund fundraising services based on the fund raised. Then debt recovery services based on the percentage of debt recovered. So many of these can be a basis, but apart from this, on a general basis, we cannot uh, charge fees based on turnover. Then accept.
accepts in any business or occupation other than the same professions or CAs unless permitted by the council so as to engage. Uh, section, there is a regulation 190 and 191. Uh, 190 talks about a CA factory shall not engage in any business or occupation other than the profession of accountancy except with the permission granted in accordance with, uh, uh, with the resolution uh, of the council. Regulation 191 talks about um, Subject to the control of the council, the CA practice may act as a liquidator. So there is a possibility of doing that in uh, 191. How you can be a liquidator, you can be a trustee, you can be an executor, administrator, arbitrator. So that's what I was saying before, is that you can become an arbitrator. There is specific guidelines which allow you to do that. Provided that is not coming in the way of your CA practice and it is not together. Then allows a person not being a member of the institute in practice or a member not being a person, uh, his partner, to sign on his behalf or on behalf of his firm any balance sheet provided as account of financial statements. Obviously, the council has uh, clarified that the power to sign uh, routine documents on which a professional opinion or authentication is not required. That can be delegated. What are these? Some of these are like this. Uh, you can issue audit queries. It need not be signed by a CA. Asking for information or issue of questionnaire, it can be it can be done. Letter forwarding, drafting, uh, raising bills, uh, office administration. It can be attending income tax uh, matters. All this is possible. The council has decided that whether CA has, while signing the report or the financial statements or any other document is actually required to disclose his name. The member should disclose his name while appending his signature on the report or document. So the report when you are signing, your name is very important. It has to be there. Now uh, we come to the part two. Uh, professional misconduct in respect of members in service. So there are uh, about two clauses. One is uh, pays or allows or agrees to pay or allow directly or indirectly any person, any share, emolument in employment, obviously when you are working as a service, you do not share your emoluments, your salary with somebody. Then accepts or agrees to accept any part of the fees, profits or gains from a, from a lawyer, a CEO, a broker, engaged by such firm or, uh, uh, or a person, agent, customer. So basically you are not sharing any fees or profits as well. One is salary, another is fees. Okay, then part three. Uh, this is uh, in general, where not being a fellow of the institute acts as a fellow of the institute. Then does not supply the information called does not supply the information called for or does not comply with the requirements asked for by the institute council or any of its committee, disciplinary committee, board, or any of these authorities. While inviting professional work from another CA or while responding to tenders or inquiries or while advertising, while advertising through write up. Uh, we should not do any false information. So, whatever information we give in your tenders, in our inquiries, all this has to be factual. You should not be roving inquiries, it should not be uh, exaggeration. So, it could be a simple example that uh, it could be uh, somebody who was uh, working as a CA before with you and you use your name continuously for further tenders, who is no more in employment with you. It could be even that. Then uh, there are, these are some general other misconducts uh, held guilty uh, in any civil or criminal court that is punishable with uh, imprisonment or term. Then any of, in the opinion of the council brings disrupt, disrupt to the profession as a result of his action. Next we will uh, come to the second schedule. So what are these uh, in the second schedule? One, disclose information acquired, acquired in the course of his professional engagement to any person other than his client so as to engage him without the consent of his client or otherwise than as required by law. That means either by law or by the without the permission of the, of the client. The information what you have cannot be disclosed to any of the third parties. It cannot happen. 
So even let's say it, uh, it, it says it is important for the work of account and order for maintaining the dignity and status. It, it, it disclosure is required by another case, it would be necessary to take, ensure that the consent is taken. You, you tell the client that this is an inquiry, let's say income tax query is raised, there are, there are, uh, there are information sought by the company. Obviously, you have to act on behalf of the client. Uh, then you have to seek information, get the information, get his uh, approval. And in case, let's say that he is not, he is, there, there is a discomfort, there is a non-compliance on his hand. It is important to warn him and tell him uh, to disclose this and uh, to do it in a proper manner according to the statute. Do not, uh, do not hide any information. And then uh, give him enough chances to correct his disclosure, correct his returns. And if that does not happen still, then we can go ahead, you can go ahead and tell him that you would disclose this information to the authorities as and when required by the law. So this has to be followed, this protocol has to be followed. Then certifies or submits in his name or in the name of the firm a report of an examination of the financial statements unless the examination of such statement and the related records has been made by him or his partner or his employee in his firm or by another CA in practice. So no, um, uh, for example, nobody should take a tax audit or an internal audit very lightly and sign reports uh, without even uh, getting into the details, without uh, doing a proper review, understanding the facts, and getting into the business, doing uh, doing according to the professional accounting standards, all these things. So there come, the council asks us to follow certain guide, uh, or to do the work and then opine on that and not to revise. So, but there is an exception for this where you share uh, your responsibility as a joint auditor. So, obviously, there are there are rules, uh, there, there are sharing of work which you sign up with the joint auditor. The standard gives you uh, uh, gives you uh, 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 areas where you have to focus as a joint joint auditor. There are areas where you comment as a um, even a, even though you're a joint auditor, uh, you comment on certain things together. You take a joint responsibility. So you are you are supposed to communicate your um, uh, your observations and to the joint auditor in writing. And this has to be documented. For example, a typical example is a bank where there are five other auditors, there are four other auditors along with you as a central cash auditor. You are not you are not supposed to you are supposed to communicate every issue, see through the balance sheet, even though it is not part of your work, go through the balance sheet, have discussions with the joint auditor, and then opine on those statements. The permit is name or uh, the name of his firm to be used in connection with any estimate of earnings contingent upon future transactions in a manner which may lead to the belief that he vouches for the accuracy. So basically, you are, it's a forecasting work, but you are certified. So you should not be doing that. He can participate in preparation of profits or financial uh, forecasts and can review them, provided he indicates clearly in the report that it's a source of information based on forecasts and it can change their assumptions and it is not a certificate. So this has to be specified in those particular reports. Then expresses his opinion on financial statements of any other business or enterprise in which he or his firm or his partner in his firm has a substantial interest. So obviously when you have a substantial interest in an organization, you are not supposed to apply, not supposed to certify any uh, assurance function. It fails to disclose a material fact known to him which is not disclosed in a financial statement but disclosure of which is necessary in making such financial statements where he is concerned with the, that financial statements in a professional geography. So that means here they are, we are again coming back to the same standard uh, materiality and uh, audit materiality, SA uh, 320. We are supposed to follow in detail SA 320. So uh, there are misstatements, omissions, erroneous statements which is possible. How you have to do that? Uh, we have to follow the standard and open on that. So that means it clearly says a material misstatement cannot happen. So in any opinion you are giving, any certificate, uh, not certificate, any opinion you are giving, mental misstatements should not happen. So focus on those areas where the mental mis there are materiality aware, involved, there is a planning materiality, there is a whole set of documents, for, whole set of standards uh, on materiality documentation. Follow those standards, ensure that you are complying with all those, identify issues, uh, talk to the management, there are a whole set of things you have to do. 
then fails to report a material misstatement known to him uh, to appear in a financial statement which he is concerned in a professional capacity. So though we came to know about a provision, we overlooked that, we opened on the statement without, without, doing, without him mentioning that. Then does not exercise due diligence or grossly negligent. So I did not follow uh, my technical standards, professional standards. I just went at the paucity of time, we didn't have time. Uh, the uh, you know, um, uh, before we take a bit over, we started late, we didn't have, you know, so many things will come. So we are busy with GSP, we are busy with internal audit, so many things will come. So, but enough, spend enough time on the assurance engagements where there are, uh, uh, where based on materiality, there are, uh, you need to open up. Then fails to obtain sufficient information which is necessary for expression of opinion. So you have to seek open, so obviously the company side also gives you various guidelines and provisions involved in company side where you have to talk about whether you want all the information, sort all the information, extension from the company. And that means it goes beyond uh, even, uh, even looking into their operations. You are supposed to get into all litigations, all legislatures, all acts, all statutes and seek this information whether the company is applicable, whether it is not applicable, you have to seek this information. So in your audit report, if you replace with it, you are seeking information and then opining on it. So that means if you don't seek the information, you might have a wrong opinion. Then it fails to invite attention to any material departure from the any general accepted procedures of audit. So this is this follows. Fails to keep monies of the client other than fees or remuneration or money meant in a, uh, uh, meant to be expended in a separate bank account. So you don't follow certain things. Uh, where uh, there, there are some, there are some uh, the council has given some uh, practical difficulties there you will face. But there are uh, import, important thing is have separate uh, bank accounts. Have the separate uh, uh, you can you can separate the transactions between yours and the clients. Though you are managing the client, if you are giving an uh, such service. Then part two. It talks about contravening any other provisions of the act, of this act or regulations when they are on guidelines given by the council. So important is to go through the act and comply with many things. Then when a CA is entered into an improper arrangement to permit his article clerk to serve his articles under some other CA. So this is an important judgment which has come as we are not going to do this. It has to be the same form. Clause 2. Being an employee of the company, firm or a person, disclose confidential information acquired in the course of his employment except as in the record by law. Then includes any information, statement, returns or forms to be submitted to the institute, uh, particularly knowing to them, but doing it false. Then defalcates or embezzles money received in the professional capacity. Other misconduct in relation to members of the institute generally, uh, they can be held uh, guilty in any other court, any criminal court for any offense. So obviously they will automatically come under the misconduct here if they start doing the practice. Uh, then uh, there are some guidelines given uh, in the advertisement for members. Uh, so there is something called as write-up. So members may advertise through a write-up, setting out their the particulars of their firm and services, what they want to render with the following guidance, and must be presented in a manner uh, to maintain the good reputation, dignity and ability of public interest. So if not solicit work through exaggeration, um, talk too many things about certain things and then getting the work. So you should, should ensure the contents of the write-up are uh, true to the best of their knowledge, so there is no false statement and their own responsibility of this. Then write-up means it's writing of particulars uh, according to the information given in the guidance. Setting out the services of the members of firms, writing or display the mem uh, particulars of the members in practice. It can be by print or by electronic media. It should be basically in uh, full mode. Then these are some of the things which they are uh, listed on where it can form part of your uh, write-up. Uh, it could be name, membership, age, uh, certain details of them about uh, membership, then email, CA logo, photo, photograph, uh, passport size, and then um, details of the employees. For firms it is uh, 
many of these information is invested here. Then there are certain things which should not happen in the writer. This is something which is important we need to see. Writer should not be false or misleading. It should not claim superiority on other members. It should not be indecent and sensational. It should not contain testimonials and endorsements uh, concerning members. You don't endorse anybody. Then it should not contain any other representations like, uh, um, that may like to, uh, to cause a person to misunderstand. Then it should not violate any act, rule, uh, obviously the C Act. Then it should, it should not include the names of the clients. Then it should, you know, font size is also uh, given. It should not exceed 40. Then it should not contain any information, achievement of the awards, position, head. So these things are certain things which are kept in detail when you are doing the uh, advertisement. Uh, recently there was an uh, amendment uh, given in this uh, advertisement where uh, a disclosure of names of clients and or fees charged on the website to permissible is only where it is required to be given by a regulator. Whether or not constituted under the uh, statute in India or outside India, provided that such disclosure is only to the extent requirement under the, required under the regulator. So you can quote the fees and details of the client, provided it is required in the statute. You also disclose the, the, the provision in which that, uh, that statute is asking you to disclose. Uh, now, lastly, I, I thought it is imp uh, I would I want to run through certain important uh, ethical uh, some decisions taken recent decisions given by the Ethical Standard Board. So uh, I thought it is uh, good to go, go through some of the important things which is given in our Ethical Standard Board website. Uh, CA practice may be an equity research advisor, but he cannot publish detailed report as it would amount to do other business or occupation. So obviously you are not allowed to do any other business other than CA. So while you are doing that, you can be a uh, uh, equity research advisor, but you should not publish a report. Then CA who is a member of a trust cannot be an auditor of the said trust. CA in practice may engage himself as a registration authority for obtaining digital signatures for clients. You can do that. Then CA can hold uh, the credit card of a bank when he is also the auditor provided the, the outstanding balance does not exceed 10,000 rupees beyond the credit period uh, limit uh, on the credit card given it to him. So there is a limit given, it has to be within the limit. Uh, he can be a mediator in court, uh, acting as a mediator would deem to be covered under the meaning of arbitrator, which is permitted by the 181 regulation. So that's why I said you can act as a regulator, as an arbitrator. A CA practice is not permitted to accept audit, audit assignments of a bank in case he has taken a loan against FT held in that bank. So it has a financial interest, so you cannot do that. The ethical uh, standard board generally, uh, it, say, it said that uh, there is an amendment rule to the income tax uh, generally wherein the statutory auditor, the tax auditor cannot be the value of an unquoted equity shares of the same entity. The board at its recent uh, meeting has reviewed the above and decided that there are law prohibits, for instance, in the Income Tax Act and the rules when there are such provision on statutory auditor and tax auditor to be the value will continue. But where there is no specific restriction, and request, uh, restriction in law, then eventually, uh, then the subject to the compliance, we can we can do that. Then uh, it was decided in 2011 that it is not permissible for a member who had been a director of a company upon resignation from such company to be appointed as an auditor of the said company. So he was a director before, then he resigned and then he became auditor of the company. Decided it is not permissible in 2011. The board at a recent, uh, uh, recent uh, meeting, it has said that, uh, that 141 of the Companies Act, on the, there is a 141 of the Companies Act where it gives you dis disqualifications. If it does not come under the 141, you can say to it. What is the reason for that two-year scoring period? What is the reason for? Two-year scoring period. Come in. Two-year scoring period. Two-year scoring period. Yeah, so earlier, uh, um, so earlier there was a uh, cooling period uh, which was specified by the uh, council uh, in their judgment. Now they say that you strictly follow as per the 141 Act. 
and if it is so obviously when uh, we cannot uh, defy on the act. So today, if 141 allows you and you are not coming under the uh, disqualifications, then you can do that. That to two years may, looks like it is removed. Then a CA practice cannot become financial advisors and receive finance, uh, fees or commission from uh, financial institutions such as mutual funds, insurance companies, MBFCs. So he cannot practice that's what sharing fees, seeking and uh, receiving fees, what we said or saw before. A CA cannot exercise lien over the client's document records, we saw this before. It is not permissible for a CA firm to print its vision and uh, values behind the listing cards. So mind you, uh, we cannot uh, say uh, in our listing cards that this is the vision of the, uh, our firm. We are prohibited from doing that. It amounts to solid, solid solicitation. Then it is not permissible for CAs in practice to take agencies of UTI, GIC or NSDL while in practice. It is not permissible, it is permissible for a member in practice to be a settler of a trust. Then a CA service may appear as a tax representative before tax authorities on behalf of this employee, but not on behalf of other co employees. Then a CA who is a statutory auditor of a, comp of a bank cannot, for the same financial, accept stock audit for the same branch or any other branch of the same bank or system concern of the bank in the same financial year. Then the CA firm has been appointed, which has been appointed as an internal auditor of a PF trust by government company, cannot be appointed as a statutory auditor. So we saw that before, the internal auditor and statutory auditor cannot be the same. A concurrent auditor of a bank X cannot be an appointed statutory auditor of a bank Y, uh, which is sponsored by X. That means the related party you will not able to do it. Then a CA CA firm can act as an uh, internal auditor of a company or a statutory auditor of its employees uh, and a statutory auditor of its employees PF fund. So you can be a statutory auditor of a, of a company and that, that company will have, uh, that employee employees will have a PF trust, you can be the auditor of the PF trust. The ethical standard board by noting that there is requirements of the director under section 1493 of the companies act to decide in, in India for a minimum period of 182 days in the previous year, calendar year, previous calendar year, decided that such a director would be within the scope of director's investment. That means you should not be a managing director who is a full time director who is into operations taking decisions. You can only attend board meetings as a practicing CA. But you are not able to take decisions, you cannot take uh, remuneration for the directorship. This is, this is not. Alone. Yes, you can be a professional director for the company advising certain issues only in the board meetings and they cannot take any remuneration. So they cannot even get involved in the day to day operations. They can't be in the major decision making process. Okay, then uh, this is one of the very, uh, family, uh, very uh, regular questions. How 10 partners in a firm, how many tax rates can I do? So it, it can, uh, so it, it is overall uh, 45 tax audits per partner. So if there are 10 partners, you can do 450 tax audits. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and it all can be signed by one partner. It need not be by other partners. Then uh, clarification of others, card opponents in practice can print their photograph on their listing cards. Public conscience is expected to be ahead of the law, members therefore are expected to interpret the requirement as regard independence uh, as far as possible, do not print photographs on the uh, listing cards. It will uh, seek to publicize and solicit, and solicit mark. Then uh, acting as a recovery consultant in a banking sector, uh, uh, recovery consultant cannot be equated with a receiver or a liquidator. You can be a receiver or a liquidator, but recovery consultant is a different work. So hence it is a uh, personal business is not permissible. Yeah, I think uh, I will try to cover many of the aspects of uh, uh, this uh, code of ethics. Uh,
there is a draft available in the website. Uh, I am here to, I mean, we need, we need a more opportunity to go through the draft and once it becomes final uh, to see the uh, revisions and amendments in that particular uh, code of ethics. It is, uh, and uh, thank you. Thank you for the patient, patient listening. Uh, uh, I hope I have conveyed uh, certain important topics. Uh, I, hope so I, have, I hope I have communicated certain important things. I am not sure if nectar has come out, but uh, we should promise ourselves that from today onwards, we will do what is honest and what is integrity. So, uh, of course, it's not, it's, it's by nature we should become like that. Uh, I, I, I thank my, uh, my uh, principal, uh, Mr. Uh, Satan Murthy, for giving me, for uh, uh, you know, connecting me to uh, this uh, forum and getting me an opportunity to talk here. Uh, I thank him. Uh, uh, I want to end this with uh, one shloka. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Dev, Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasma Shri Guru Venama. So I thank all my principles for whatever knowledge I have received and uh, hope to grow better along with you. Thank you. Friends, uh, as I said, this is the Amrita coming from the Vasuki's mouth, right? So, this has been eye opener with regard to certain you know, mind aspects. We, though everybody is aware about uh, the professional ethics at the broader level, when it goes to the minute line by line items and the requirements, we feel yes, it's better to refresh it once again. So, and a lot of uh, uh, you know, new dimension to it and new ways of looking at it. So, uh, Vasuki, thank you very much. This is a wonderful job that you have done. More than 278 people are watching this program live. Uh, this is not a small crowd here, this is the quality crowd here and also a quality crowd there who are looking the, uh, watching this program through the live telecast, webcast. And thank you very much. Now I request Geeta, I will be the chairperson of Bible Press to come forward and present a moment to Vasuki. Thank you very Friends, I would like to thank each one of you for your active participation. You know, any program that we conduct, you are the support. You are the uh, you know uh, instrumental for success of all these programs. And also, I would like to thank all the members who are watching this program live. And uh, I would like to see bigger number of audience coming to the live, uh, live web, uh, webcasting also, uh, so that it is going to be reaching to the maximum number of uh, delegates. With these words, we would like to conclude today's session. Uh, good night. Thank you.